welcome back to Courier to Camper. I know it's been a while since our last video, but if I've learned one thing doing this, it's that van conversions take time. And if you're following Courier to Camper on Instagram, you'll know we have already taken Roger on his first trip to France, but this episode is going to be all about how we ply lined it and built the cabinets. So it looks like this. Let's go! So here I'm building the wheel arch covers. Now we had loads of scraps of wood that we wanted to use, so I did, but because some of them were so thin, it was hard to screw them together without the ply splitting. So we used some wood glue and some square doweling to hold all of the pieces in position. Used bricks to weigh them down whilst the glue dried. And then once the glue had fully dried, we were able to use pin nails, really thin ones, to hold them together better. But because we built these ages ago, we did find ourselves a little problem. Check it. So we made our wheel arches ages ago, but after cutting our ply to fit nice and flush up to the side of the van, we came across a problem, which is this. When we put our lovely wheel arches on, we left with a bit of a gap down there. So rather than make new wheel arches, we created this. Check it out. Now this, just a bit of wood attached to some of the wood that we chopped off our bit of ply that's already on and fits in here nice and snug so we'll screw that on and then you should have that gap covered up like this side that is not professional Next up was our benches. Now I needed to get these right because they're really important. We're gonna be sitting on them to eat. They're gonna turn into our double bed. We're gonna have storage in them. So it's an important part of our van build. Now we used a mitre saw to cut all of the battens, which made things much, much easier. So they're really important to get all the battens the right length so they sit properly in the van. And they actually, once I had the batten the cut, came together quite easily. Easily. Really enjoyed this day because I was also watching Everton beat Arsenal 1-0 on the laptop outside and it was quite sunny. That was a good day. Might have been the last time we won a game. But anyway, once I got the frames built, I got them into the van and put the lids on with these half a swing up and stay hinges. Uh, then we put some OSB frontages on to finish them off. Oh, and these clamps were super useful when trying to pin nail the OSB panels on. Now, there's quite a lot of videos of us attempting to ply line and build cabinets and attach them into the van. But instead of boring you with all those videos, I want to keep these as short and useful as possible. Um, so I'm just going to take you through a few tools and a few techniques that we found really useful in this part of the build. So when ply lining, a useful tool and for cutting doors for your cabinets is a big bandsaw like this one. You can do everything with a jigsaw, but these bandsaws are really good, they're really fast and you can cut straight lines, which can be really useful for this bit of the build. And another thing when attaching your ply lining that we found is that obviously you want to attach it to the metal skeleton on the inside of your van, but a lot of that skeleton has random holes in it. So we just use masking tape to tape where those holes are. So a lot of time when you put the ply line over it, you can't see where those holes are. So to ensure you're not just drilling your ply lining into nothing, just mark them where they are with bits of tape that we've done here. And then you can ensure you're not drilling in to nothing. A really useful tool is a pocket hole jig and they're really cheap. We got this one for about 12 quid off eBay and they're really useful for putting diagonal holes through the edges of your sheet material, whether you use a ply or OSB, whatever it is. You get one of these, you can put a diagonal hole into the end and then you can use that diagonal hole to screw into the edge of your cabinets or screw the edge of your cabinets into the floor um, and then you just have to use less battens which creates more space inside the cabinets that you're building. So yeah, get yourself one of these. 
one of the most important things that we learned while building all the cabinets was scribing. We learned about this at the Campervan Carpentry Workshop of 2019 Camp Quirky. Because none of the lines in your van, none of the walls are going to be straight, you're going to have to build your cabinets against curves and weird steps and shapes and things. You need a way to get your wood to fit to those shapes and we found this to be the best way. It's pretty simple scribing really. If you get the height of the panel that you're cutting, so with a cupboard like this, we got the height of it right. And then we push it up to the wall as close as we can get it. And then we set the compass to slightly wider than the widest point between the wall and the edge of the panel that we're cutting. When you start at the top of the wall with your compass and then bring it down, keeping it perpendicular all the way down. And then you should draw a line that once you cut it will just fit snugly against the wall. Now it takes quite a bit of practice this but it is a really really useful tool. If you want any more info on it because my description probably isn't that great just check out uh, carpentry scribing on Google and there's plenty of videos explaining how to do it properly. So yeah that is how we built all the cabinets and benches and that for our van. Now lots of jobs you do whilst you're building your own camper van are going to be frustrating, they're going to be hard, but I've got to say I quite enjoy doing all the cabinets and the benches and that. The good thing about these with the woodwork is, is that you can make mistakes and just try things again. You're not going to do any irreversible damage to your van whilst building a cupboard, are you? And also doing your own unit gives you the chance to build the van that you want to build. We had a design and idea in our head. We wanted loads of kitchen worktop space and we were able to put that in. We wanted to be able to walk all the way through the van rather than go with one of these standard kit outs that you see in a lot of transporters these days. One other thing I would recommend is going away in your van before you've got all your cabinets and stuff finished because when we were away in France, we realized that we needed a bit more storage. So we built this bookcase onto our kitchen worktops. We also realized we had nowhere to put shoes, which were all over the van for most of our holiday. So we built a shoe rack in. And yeah, I think the more you can go away in your van before you've finished it, the more you'll realize what you need so that you can keep it tidy and it can be livable in whilst you're away in it. One of the most useful things we learned when taking our van away for the first time was that we needed these little hooks. These just stop the doors from flying open as you are driving around corners when you're out and about in your van. So when we initially made all the cabinets, we just put these magnets on, which are great for holding the doors shut just while you're stationary. But as soon as you start moving, that'll open. All your cutlery tray will come flying out. But once we put these hooks on, that hasn't been a problem. So yeah, get some hooks or some other ways of securing your doors when you're moving. We will be back very soon with more videos. We have got a video coming up of a bunk, a removable bunk that we put into the van, despite going to see various van building professionals who all advised us against it. Louise wanted it in, and eventually we found a way, and I'm quite confident that it's gonna stay up on the walls now. So yeah, hopefully we'll be back soon with another episode of Courier to Camper with our removable bunk build. Laters! <laughs>